Good morning. I didn't realize this was round. So I have to be careful not to fall off. Um, uh, it's an honor to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about something completely different that you've heard until now, much less profound, but perhaps uh, still important. And I'm going to talk to you about the, uh, something that I've started dealing with uh, once in the government. Uh, during my uh, sort of mostly active academic years, I dealt with uh, finance mostly, um, and uh, when I came to the government, uh, I had to broaden my, uh, my reach. Uh, there were many, many different uh, issues in economic policy that had to be dealt with. And then when I left the government after six years, I, I, I again focused on, but now on a different e set of issues related to Israeli innovation uh, ecosystem, technological innovation ecosystem. That's what I want to talk to you about. So this is what I call my bragging slide. Uh, what, it, what it's supposed to tell you is that Israel is the densest um, uh, technological innovation ecosystem in the world. Uh, what it means is that uh, basically any parameter, and I could put another 10 parameters here uh, on, the, on the screen, whether we number one in R&D as a percentage of GDP, where we number one in terms of startups per capita, we're number three in the World Economic Forum uh, Innovation Index, the first two are Switzerland and United States, uh, and we're actually number two, uh, I think this is a very important part, we're number two in the VC Investor uh, Confidence uh, Index, uh, despite the fact that if you read the newspapers uh, where you live, it probably doesn't sound like it. And yet, um, this, uh, these people are actually putting their money where their mouth is. And so you can see that Israel attracts more than twice the amount of VC capital per capita than the United States, which is much higher than anybody else in the world. So we're sort of in the league of our own. And this is a breaking slide, so it's a very rosy picture. But looking forward, you know, as the Red Queen said, you know, in order to stay in place, you have to run as fast as you can. If you want to get advanced, you have to run faster. So in this case, this is very appropriate because we, this uh, situation that we're facing is actually not an, equi not an equilibrium. We actually, uh, and the reason that it's not an equilibrium because we are facing much tougher competition than 10 years ago. When the book Startup Nation came out, it turned out that there was Silicon Valley, which was like this giant, and then there was a sizable ecosystem, which everybody was surprised by, in a very unlikely place in the world, in the Middle East, and this was us. But then everywhere else, these were very small ecosystems, much smaller than us, and so we were number two. Since then, a lot of people came, when I was with the Prime Minister, a lot of presidents and Prime Ministers came with a book to the meeting with him and said, how the hell did you do this? Well, without the help part. And uh, they said, uh, and they didn't ask this question rhetorically because what they actually wanted to know is how they can do it. And so today, the new report that just came out uh, indicates that in Europe alone, there are 30, th 30 centers, innovation centers with at least 50,000 programmers in each. Okay, so there's a much bigger competition. This doesn't count places like Beijing and, and Shanghai and Singapore and New York and, and Phoenix, et cetera, et cetera, and of course, um, the, the, the traditional places. So the point that I'm trying to make is that we have two choices as Israel. We can either go down because which is going to, when, when we become uh, smaller and smaller in relative terms because other bigger countries become bigger and bigger, uh, which is the, the whole thing is going to unravel and uh, fewer companies will find it interesting to come here, fewer investors will invest here, etc. And then Israeli companies will start opening their offices as they do already, but in much larger numbers in New York or Silicon Valley or in Berlin. Uh, the alternative is there is an opportunity here to actually build on our existing strength and to actually go up. It's a much slower process, but the difference between the picture on the right which will bring us to much less than 10% of the GDP. Uh, today, we're between 12 and 15, depending on how you count. And the picture on the left, which can bring us to over 20% of GDP. There's very few economic policies that can, uh, that can generate over 10% of GDP in the next 10 years. So uh, what is required? In order to, what, what we need is for high-tech sector to grow. This is not a simple task, because we're already the highest 
high-tech sector in the world is a percentage of the economy, by far. And yet, in order to stay in that position, we have to grow further. What do you need in order to grow? What you need are four things. First of all, you need three sources of capital, uh, and then you need a balance between them in a supportive environment so they actually can gel together and stay in Israel. So the first capital is intellectual capital. Okay, you need a lot of ideas, a lot of research that would bring the ideas into something that can be then commercialized. The second uh, capital is the human capital. The human capital, the people who need to be uh, either entrepreneurs or the workers in those companies that can bring these ideas to fruition. And of course, you need financial capital, which can pay for it all. And so the, the, um, these three types of capital, the lowest one, the one that you have the fewest, will determine the size of your ecosystem, not the biggest. So today, we're very blessed with a lot of financial capital. The amount of financial capital that is flowing into Israel over the last four years tripled. Okay, so we, we are actually pretty blessed with, the, with this. The amount of intellectual capital, there is an important um, things are happening in the universities, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the, the Hebrew University, and you definitely have seen and will see more, more of that. But there, the uh, research today is becoming more and more expensive, and you, again, just like in innovation, in research, you're competing with bigger and bigger organizations around the world who can put in even companies in certain areas. They could put amounts of money that are higher than entire Israeli research budget So on, on a problem. So we have to be extremely efficient and extremely focused and extremely collaborative and choose very carefully where, where we put our money, and that is very, very important. And the last part, uh, that we are that we are very short on is actually human capital. We are uh, Startup Nation Central is publishing the uh, two years in a row publishing a survey of the shortage of human capital. We now have 15,000 open positions in a high tech sector alone, not including the rest of the economy that needs programmers and engineers in in the tech sector that are missing people. We are opening the development centers in Ukraine, in Belarus, in, in uh, Portugal, uh, Hungary, Poland, etc., in extremely large numbers. So we, in order to grow, we have to solve this problem. Luckily, this problem is uh, solvable because there are a large number of populations, women, Arabs, Haredi, periphery, etc., uh, they are not represented in this ecosystem. The, uh, on the technological side, over 80% of the people that are working in that ecosystem are men from about four metropolitan areas from middle class families. Okay, this is, this is less than 40% of the population. We have another 60% of population we can draw on, which is a great opportunity. So let me move to, to Jerusalem and Hebrew University, how they fit into this picture, because I wanted to paint the picture and then move. So this is sometimes when you talk about Jerusalem, this is the picture that you see. Okay, well, some of the people in mind, or if you read your newspapers, or if you see your, your it's either, uh, you know, I don't have to explain what this means, or you can see this picture, which uh, actually tells a pretty uh, dark story about, about Jerusalem, whether it's uh, how many people live below poverty line, how many people participate in the workforce, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So these are demographics. We cannot, we cannot argue with the demographics. This is what Jerusalem is. And Israel is moving in that direction, maybe not to the same extreme, but in that direction. That's, uh, uh, so this is also indisputable. What is disputable and what can be changed are the numbers about poverty line and the, and the uh, participation in the, in the labor force, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, but this is also Jerusalem. Okay, Startup uh, Genome Report 2019 says that Jerusalem is a place where new solutions emerged and can uh, solve world problems in, in a variety of fields. In 2017, Jerusalem was announced by the same organization as number one emerging uh, innovation hub which is very surprising because we don't usually think about Jerusalem in those, in those terms. You know, Jerusalem ecosystem today has over 480 technology companies. It's more than doubled over the last six years. 
um, 25 innovation hubs, accelerators, uh, incubators, etc. 25 investment funds. Um, 23 are in these centers of international companies, and over 180 million were invested in uh, 2018 in Jerusalem ecosystem. Okay, is this big or this is small? On the one hand, it's much bigger than you would have expected. On the other hand, it's much smaller than Tel Aviv, and it's also much smaller than it could be. So the question is, how do we make sure that this ecosystem grows rather than succumb to the gravitational pull from Tel Aviv, which is about 10 times bigger, uh, at least Gush Dan, what is called the Tel Aviv metropolitan area. And so this is, uh, you can look at uh, some, of the, some of the companies, uh, you know, whether it's uh, Orcam and Mobileye and Home Talk and Ex Libris. These are all large companies that came uh, out of Jerusalem. Actually, the largest exits, uh, some of the largest exits in, uh, in, in uh, Israeli history came out of Jerusalem. These are very large organizations and very important organizations that you've, you, on the, on the right-hand side, that support this ecosystem. We see sectors of excellence in uh, digital health, uh, in computer vision, in art and design. This is something that we are very much supporting that are coming from the combination of uh, academy, medical centers, and, and the uh, surrounding structures. The role of Hebrew University is actually very important both in, in Jerusalem but also in the level of the country. First of all, you have seen, and you will continue seeing when I stop talking, uh, cutting-edge research uh, that is coming out of this university, and it's been coming out of this university for the last, what, 90 years? I don't, I don't even remember. 90 plus, yeah. What, 92 years? Um, uh, I wasn't there then, so I don't remember. Uh, but what's important, uh, no less, is that Hebrew University is not only a supplier of high-quality human capital, it supplies 15% of all the computer graduates in the country, and this percentage is growing. And the final thing is that it provides supportive environment and connectivity by connecting the city. Because the same problem that I described, how do you connect the populations that today are not connected to the, to the ecosystem, the innovation ecosystem. How can you do it? The best, uh, the best ground to try this is actually in Jerusalem, and universities are very much involved in that. So this is one of, those cons uh, one of those events that we are happy to sort of assist at it in a small way, that the university just won the Innovation Campus Award with the 20 million shekels to promote this integration across fields and across parts of communities in Jerusalem to bring innovation into the campus and from the campus to the surrounding community. Hebrew University actually did something very important for, the, for the, uh, addressing the shortage of human capital. You can see the evolution of this number of students studying computer sciences in Jerusalem, and these numbers are continuing to rise and will continue to rise, uh, the way ahead of the uh, countrywide drive to do that. This was done even before uh, additional incentives, etc. So this is, this is extremely important because each person like that generates enormous amounts of uh, value, both for themselves, their communities, as well as the country. And finally, uh, a little word about us. Um, we are, uh, our main office is in Tel Aviv because we cater to the entire ecosystem, but we have one more office, which is actually in Jerusalem. We are uh, coordinating, we're convening a uh, body that works with the government, uh, with the Jerusalem Authority, with all the stakeholders, of course, including Hebrew University and Bezalel and medical centers and Azraeli and all the, all the players in the ecosystem trying to convene and create critical mass. We're doing it at city level. We're trying to figure out how do you develop a regional ecosystem in the face where 40 miles away from you, there is a much bigger ecosystem that continuously pulls, it, pulls people and companies uh, uh, out of Jerusalem. Instead, we're trying to, to keep them here and actually pull some, some others into the city. We're doing it in the, on the national level. Both Haifa and Beersheva are uh, asking us to, to, to do this with them as well. We, at this stage, we're not... We're not yet uh, able to do that, but there's definitely, we are coordinating community of regional hubs in, in, in Israel. And we're also doing some work on the global level, branding uh, of the Jerusalem ecosystem and helping, helping uh, it get more, 
more attention. So overall, uh, Jerusalem is an incredibly important place for its own sake uh, and for as an example for other places to, to emulate later on. So we, we believe that Hebrew University and all the stakeholders can do a lot to bring, to bring Jerusalem together on all, uh, all levels, whether it's tech with design, whether it's Arabs with Jews, whether it's religious with non-religious, they all have to get under the stretcher, as you say, in the military and pull their own weight to create a lot of value for the city and for the country. Thank you very much.